Well, uh, not you know, man. I'm gonna say Mr. Baller for a minute. I just did a uh, Mr. Baller video uh, earlier today. Um, I just seen this, but yeah, man, we got three true gas out of gas stories, man. Go on, dip into it. Make sure y'all give me a thumbs up. <clears throat> I might get me a Mr. Uh, Nightmare toy. I ain't gonna lie. This happened way back in 2005. I was 18. I was living in Uvalde, Texas, a very low income neighborhood. The kind you'll find sprawled out all over the place in rural Texas when you're not right outside of a city. The closest city to me was San Antonio. I was going to some local community college because that's all my parents could afford for me. One of my best friends from high school, Andrew, moved to San Antonio to go to San Antonio College. He was living in some small apartment a little outside of the city with a roommate. His girlfriend would also often stay with him. Since the city's only really an hour and a half away, I would visit him all the time. He invited me this one weekend to come crash for the night. So I took my trusty old 1995 Toyota pickup truck I'm just kidding. The thing was a piece of crap. The gas gauge didn't even work on it. Oh, hell I had to no. always just keep track of when the last time I filled the tank up was. And oh, hell no. <laughs> hell the fuck no. I don't even play like that. Fuck Set the that. trip mileage. I took Route 90, which was a straight shot from Uvalde to San Antonio. I was on the road at like 3 p.m. on a Friday, and there was no traffic at all. I got to Andrew at a reasonable time. His girlfriend wouldn't be getting there until tomorrow, so tonight we were going to go out. We stopped at a liquor store and we drank in his apartment for a while with his roommate. Then the three of us went to this dive bar that would kind of look the other way with fake IDs. That was basically our night. We got back to their apartment around 2 a.m. after getting food. I slept on the couch. The next day would have almost been the same thing, but Andrew and his girlfriend were having issues all day. And as the two of them got drunker as the night progressed, she started yelling at him in front of me. It got really awkward and uncomfortable. I didn't really have much to drink that day because I was already iffy about staying the night with her there. I eventually decided I would just head back home. I said goodbye to everyone and started my journey home. It was very late at night. I want to guess midnight, maybe a little earlier. Route 90 was deserted at this time, so I would fly or fly for my pickup standards. But suddenly the engine started sputtering. No, you ain't got no gas in all the It's crazy. I ain't gonna count. You, you should have felt, you should have made sure you had some gas. At least put about 10 in. <laughs> oh, yeah. I felt my heart completely drop as I realized I forgot to fill up the tank. I slowed down, but it was too late. The engine cut. Mm. I pulled to the side of the road and tried starting it a few times, but it did no good. It's a it's hard to sit with granger just we've hit almost every type of event you can have with our keep stock program last night got my cell phone which was equally as shitty as my truck and i tried to get a signal no shot i couldn't even call for help i had to just put my hazards on and hope a good samaritan would pass you wouldn't believe how long i sat on the side of the road before seeing headlights i waved my arms as the car approached but it zoomed past me ignoring me Damn. This happened again after another 10 minutes or so. Yeah, crazy. I was starting to feel hopeless. Like maybe I should just sleep in my car and wait till sunrise to get help. So that's what I was going to do. I got inside my car, took the key out of the ignition to cut the battery, and just angled my seat back to go to sleep. I would hear the occasional car zooming past like once every 10 minutes, but it didn't feel worth waving people down in the dark. It seemed sketchy for myself and to the people in the cars. When I was starting to actually drift away to sleep, a car door closing from behind me woke me up. I looked in the rearview mirror and saw a car pulled up behind me with its headlights off. I turned around now to get a better look. There was some big pickup truck, but I couldn't see anyone inside of it, nor did I see anyone outside of it. Maybe someone pulled over to help. I got out of the car and said, excuse me, to no response. I walked closer to the truck just to confirm no one was inside. And I walked back to my car. This was weird. I looked towards the trees on the side of the road. Maybe someone was pissing in the woods. I went back inside of my car and locked the door. This was just too weird. Suddenly there was a tap at my window. I jumped. 
i looked to see a man looking down at me into the car smiling i didn't do anything yet we got think about this year 2005 wait they had phone they had phones back in 2005 we could have he could have had a phone why you get on phone? he said hey buddy you need a hand i lowered the window a crack and said hey i ran out of gas the man said that's quite the predicament step out and give me a hand with this real quick when he said this, I thought he meant help him with a gas jug to fill up my tank or something, honestly. And so I stepped out of the truck and shut the door, expecting him to lead me to his truck. But he stood there, looked down at me because he was much taller, still smiling, and said, I need you to empty your pockets, please. Damn! It took me a second to process what he meant. Robbing oil. I was literally a broke college student driving a piece of shit pickup truck. I wasn't about to get robbed of the only cash I had and my phone. I ran for it in the Wait direction a minute. of the trees. Hey, buddy. Wait, you got your phone the whole time, buddy? You could have called the police or somebody. Called the police, called your home, but told them to come get you. Nigga had his phone the whole time. This a dumb story. I, I could tell you already. I'm small but fast. I turned around and saw he was chasing after me. Once I made it into the trees, I zigzagged all over the place until I seemed to lose him. And I crouched behind a big tree to catch my breath. When I heard him approaching closer, I quieted my breath. I heard him say out loud, I'll kill you, you piece of shit. I don't know if he was just saying it out loud out of anger, or if he wanted me to hear it, but I was too scared to move. Even after I heard his footsteps move away, I didn't move. In fact, I stayed in this position the rest of the night, eventually laying behind this big tree up until dawn. I went back over to the highway to my truck, and the truck behind me was gone, but my truck's doors were both open. I found that my glove box had been gone through and completely emptied of anything somewhat valuable. My flannel hoodie was also taken, which had something in the pocket, I'm sure. I finally managed to wave down a good Samaritan, and he gave me a ride to the closest gas station. I bought a fuel can, filled it with gas, and the man brought me back to my car, where I filled my tank just enough to drive the truck to a gas station to fill up completely. Then I went straight home. This was a real-life learning experience for me, that there are bad people out there who will try to take advantage of you when you're in a vulnerable spot. But there are also good people, like the man who helped me. Yeah. Crypto makes the world go forward. Crypto makes the world go forward. Yeah, so, you know who to trust, if you're type shit. Y'all be... It nigga had his phone the whole time. It's crazy. And bro, you know, bro, and if you get me, you knew that your 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 your, your gas gauge is, is retarded. So you, you should have put a 10 in just to make sure. When I was 18, I was very immature and naive. I was kind of a jerk when I was on the road. Honking whenever I got impatient, borderline cutting people off. Me. Looking back now, it was very stupid. Me. If I ever have kids, I'll be that much more strict with them as far as their driving. Me. That being said, I did drive a lot for someone my age. I went away to school, five hours away from home. No matter what day of the week, traffic always gets atrocious the closer I get to home. So during breaks, I'll drive home at night to avoid this. It goes from a four to five hour drive. I don't care, I used to do the same thing when I, when I was about eight, 17, 18. And I had a charger too, so imagine. <laughs> I'm down to a three hour drive. It was the beginning of winter break, and the fall semester just ended. All my friends left for home on the same day. I just waited till later on in the night to head out, because there's nothing I hate more than traffic. I used to drive a Mazda 3 that I would beat the ever-living crap out of, and admittedly, I used to be known for driving my car to a near-empty tank consistently. People would comment on it whenever they'd be in the car with me, and I'd always assure them that the car would still have at least 30 miles to go, even if- I ain't gonna lie. I hate it before telling me how, how much gas I got on my shit too. Like, why the fuck you looking over here, man? To the needle would hit E. I found out the night I was driving home from school that I was wrong. I was only like an hour into my drive on the interstate. The needle was on E, and I was pushing my luck, waiting for a gas station sign instead of looking up the nearest one on the map. The car started making these weird sounds suddenly and jolting. And that's when I realized I may have actually run the tank empty this time. I got off the first exit ramp and hoped it would lead right to a gas station. This exit was dark though, with no street lights. I ain't never ran out of gas. It was just woods on either it's side. Crazy. 
i was scared to slow down and lose my speed because i didn't know if i'd have enough gas to find a gas station. i blew through the stop sign at the end of the ramp and made a sharp fast turn on the intersecting road which was another dark road surrounded by woods i was screwed the car eventually came to a stop and the engine died things only got worse when i took out my phone and saw i had no bars damn i have t-mobile which is the worst possible reception anywhere far from a major city i tried calling 911 because terrible. i was stupid and thought that 911 works even without reception of course it didn't i was terrified now i don't want to work without no reception why not because I didn't know what to do. Nurse, I turned on my hazard lights and just waited for someone to pass by. It was a long time before I saw headlights approaching. When I did, I flashed my headlights at them, and they passed me, made a U-turn, then pulled up on the grass behind me. I didn't know who was getting out of that car, though. I was an 18-year-old defenseless girl. I just cracked the window down a little bit as this man approached my car. I told him I need help. I ran out of gas. <clears throat> he offered to give me a ride to the nearest gas station. He was this bald and guy with glasses on. He kind of looked trustworthy. I had no other apparent options but to accept his offer. I got out of the car and followed him to his car, making sure to lock my doors first. His car was a black Honda, year probably in 2010. It smelled funky in his car. Damn. I couldn't pin what the smell could be though. He banged another U-turn and started driving in the direction he was driving before. He made conversation with me, asking where I was from and basic questions. I was honest with him that I was driving home from school. He said he lived in the area and that they don't get too many out-of-towners getting off the interstate for this quiet little town. The route we were taking lacked any buildings anywhere. It was just woods everywhere. I asked if he knew of any gas stations and he said, yeah, just a ways up the road. I started hearing bumping and thumping coming from the back of the vehicle. It sounded like the trunk. At first I thought it was maybe just bumps in the road or a loose object in the trunk. He seemed to keep talking and talking like he wouldn't stop. Finally, we got to a sort of town looking area. There were some lights and buildings at last. A diner and a few small houses. There was a red light at the first intersection since I got in his car. We came to a stop. For the first time, there was silence. And then, I heard the unmistakable sound of someone screaming in the trunk, followed by thumps and bangs. I looked at the man who looked at me. In a split second, I unbuckled my seatbelt, opened the door, and ran, while at the same time he tried grabbing me and pulling me back into the car. I heard him get out as well, but instead of chasing me, he ran to close his passenger side door, and then I heard him floor it down the street. I ran into the diner and asked for help, making a scene. I used their phone to call 911. I waited there. It became this whole huge thing, with multiple police showing up to the diner to take a report. Take a Given the gravity of the report that I was making, and I heard someone in the trunk of the car, they had to get every last detail for me about the man's car, his appearance, and where he picked me up. I was also given a ride back to my car so that they could also include the pickup location in the report. They also helped me get a hold of AAA which eventually would come to my location to fill my car with gas. This was overall the scariest experience of my life. I was shaken to the core the whole rest of the ride home. I hope they found that man. I hope whoever was in that trunk is still alive today. For all I know, that man could have been bringing me to his house or somewhere else. I was just lucky I had a chance to get out at that red light. You lucky than a motherfucker. The first one was done, I ain't gonna lie. Let's see if I'm dead too. I live in Burke County, North Carolina in Morganton. I'm used to the quiet lifestyle that comes with living in a rural place. You get some weird characters here and there, but it's usually nothing too bad. I own a nice plot of land with my husband. My work schedule fluctuates. Sometimes I work days, sometimes I work nights. This happened on the night that I was on my way home after a night shift, so it had to be like 3 a.m. My phone was almost dead, I was hungry, I was tired, and I just wanted to get some food and head home. I stopped at the gas station to get $10 worth of gas and also a packaged sandwich, which I proceeded to eat inside the gas station cafe. Some sketchy guy was eyeing me for a little until he left the building without buying anything. After eating, I went outside to fill up the gas and then got back in the car. The smell of gasoline was extra pungent for some reason. 
these roads are very dark and twisty at night so i was driving slow especially since i was tired after a long day of work then something unexpected happened the needle on the gas gauge suddenly dropped to e and the low gas light came on and beeped i had no idea what was going on i'm not a car person and i'd never run out of gas before this That, that, that person that looked at her, hit, hit her gas, man. Had to. Had to. Plus, the needle just suddenly dropped. I thought at first that the computer was glitching, so I pulled over and restarted the car, but the needle was still on E. I tried to continue driving, but the engine died. Damn. I started having a panic attack. Yeah, I would have. I called one. my husband first thing. Oh, this is female God too. Oh, up. my God. I asked him how did my car run out of gas after I just filled up. And as I got out of the car, I smelled gasoline. I told him this, and he said it sounds like I have a leak. He told me he'd head right over, and he'd call a roadside assistance company. But then I heard a car coming with no headlights, and suddenly it stopped, not far behind my car. Oh, hell no. I suddenly thought to bring up that sketchy guy who was watching me at the gas station, and I asked my husband if there was a chance he did something to my car. My husband's tone suddenly changed to sounding more concerned and worried. He said, yes, there's a chance that he may have cut my fuel line. I didn't know what that meant. All I knew was I needed to run. I took my keys out of the ignition and shut the door and locked it so that the headlights would turn off. Prime example, my women get y'all a fire on or with a, a, a mace or something, but get y'all a goddamn that animal. Goddamn, sort that damn thing up fast. Pause. I'm watching the movie. But anyway, yeah, man, uh... Y'all females, y'all gotta be careful, man. My phone was on like 2%, so I told him to text me when he's close. I ran off the road and towards the first house I could find. I ran down the long driveway and up the property to the front door. All the lights in the house were off. I still rang the bell multiple times anyway. Eventually, a light turned on, and then the door opened. A man in his 60s opened the door. He looked like he was just woken up. I asked him to let me in to hide and charge my phone. After a bit of explaining, he opened the door fully and let me in. I asked him for an iPhone charger, and he said he'd go look for one, and asked me to take a seat in the living room. I sat down, still in my nurse scrubs, feeling a mix of emotions. The man called out from the kitchen asking me if I wanted some water. I said yes, please. Little did he know, I saw his reflection in a mirror in the living room that gave visibility into the kitchen I saw him fill a cup with water. Then I know for a fact, I saw him drop something into the water. He walked out of view of the mirror. What the motherfucker, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is this? But the faucet was still running. It ran for a solid 30 more seconds before he turned it off. He came back into the living room with a glass of water and handed it to me. I thanked him, and he sat down and just looked at me then asked me to explain the situation again. I replied to him I just really need a charger so that I could contact my husband. He said, oh right, and went upstairs. I checked my phone, and it was on 1%. I used that remaining battery to send my current location to my husband just in case. I then smelled the glass of water, and although it didn't smell like anything, I knew he put something in it. Uh, yeah, no. I had to make the decision of whether I should leave or not. Leave. On one hand, I needed to charge my phone badly. On the other, I was 99% sure he did something to this water. Don't drink the water. But, hey, hey, but it's a hard, it's hard because, damn, you need to charge your phone because if you don't charge it, your husband going to go there and um your, your husband going to get a garlic. Damn. It's going crazy. I ain't going to lie. I heard him walking back down the stairs, and he said he doesn't have any iPhone chargers since he has an Android. After he said this, I got up and walked straight for the door. I'm not an idiot. Once outside, I ran back down the driveway to the road. I felt like throwing up. I couldn't believe two separate potential incidents from two different men happened in one night. I crept along the side of the road behind the trees. They're working together. I took out my phone and sent my updated location. Right around now is when my battery died. Hey. I waited for until I saw familiar headlights of my husband's truck. I went out waving my arms, and thank God it was him. 
i got inside the truck and let all my emotions out, crying to him about what i just went through he brought us to my car, and there was no longer a car behind mine my back window was shattered though, and it appeared someone had gotten into the back seat but nothing of high value was left in my car to steal anyway my car battery was also now dead when i told my husband about the man who tried to potentially roofie me he was so furious he wanted to go break down his door but I told him no I ain't gonna care. I'm that type of husband. I'm W fucking husband. W husband, but shit. Really, really. My, if I was, you uh, ain't even going. I ain't even filming without me, but she will come from work. I think she said something like that. Damn. I'm that type of husband. I wanna, yeah. Hey. hey, motherfucker, you try to, hey, you try to, yeah, you try to do something to my mom. Yeah, boy. Catch your ass while you at the store. Oh. Let's just wait for the tow truck to come. We waited quite a while before it came. My car was towed to my dealership, where they would take the car in the next day. My husband was right. My car was vandalized and the fuel line was cut completely. Thank God I was off the next few days because I needed some time to mentally recover from this night. The idea that twice in one night, I was almost a victim of some sketchy men, I just couldn't get over. Yeah, no, I, damn, that's... Crazy, two, they probably were working together, but, you know what I'm saying, two, two times in one night, that's why I say y'all women gotta be motherfucking, after that, if that my wife, after that, personally, baby, we going to the gun range, you finna learn how to shoot, y'all know you gonna need counseling probably, cause some of that shit, that shit be crazy, but anyway, man, give me your thumbs up, subscribe, see you in the next video, let's ride, nigga.